Trudeau's NDP government claims to represent working men and women, but I actually don't think they do. There's not a single person in their entire caucus who has any connection to Alberta's chief industry, oil and gas. They represent workers, all right, but they're all public sector government workers, teachers union members, nurses union members, union bosses, but, but no one who's actually gone out and worked on a pipeline or an oil field. So they just don't know a lot about the industry that has given Alberta so much prosperity. To make matters worse, 10 out of the 12 chiefs of staff for the new Alberta government aren't even from Alberta. They're NDP activists from Vancouver or Toronto who learned their knowledge about oil and gas from David Suzuki or Jack Layton, so they actually have a lot of disinformation. This is manifested in Premier Rachel Notley herself, who says things that are just economically illiterate. Uh, take a listen to this 16 second clip from question period last week and then I'll talk to you a little bit about it. Take a look. Our position on the Keystone was that if we ship uh, unprocessed bitumen to Texas, according to this government and to the American government, we will give tens of thousands of Alberta jobs to Texas, not to Albertans, and that's not what Albertans want to see. The first thing that struck me about that was she said unprocessed bitumen. Well, that's a fancy way of saying crude oil. But if she were to said, let's stop exporting crude oil, every single Albertan would say, what are you talking about? Exporting crude oil is what we've been doing for close to a century. It's while we're so rich. It's what's built all these great six-figure jobs. What are you saying? Don't export crude oil. When she phrases it, unprocessed bitumen, it sounds, whoa, does she, she know something we don't know? Not really. She's just using a trickster's lobbyist language. Uh, it, it's even weirder what she's saying. She's saying we can't export these refining jobs to the United States. But of course, Alberta's refineries are all full. There is no shortage of feedstock of oil to go to those refineries. Uh, there is a new refinery being built. It's called the Northwest Upgrader. Uh, it, they started work on it, what, 2007 they got their approval. So they actually started before then. It's not scheduled to open for another two or three years. And even when it does, its capacity will be 150,000 barrels a day. That sounds like a lot, but it's not even 10% of the oil sands that we export. So the only upgrader refinery that's being built right now is just a tiny slice of the pie. But Rachel Notley is saying, stop, stop exporting any more crude oil because we're losing jobs. It's not true. This Northwest upgrader will be busy and there are no other refineries planned. Even if someone today were to say, hey, I want to invest $10 billion and in 10 years have a, a, a refinery, we would have to wait 10 years? Look, we, we simply export crude oil because that's the way the market works. Our customers decide what they want to do with that oil, whether it's jet fuel or gasoline or kerosene or home heating oil or bunker fuel for a ship. It would be bizarre for us to make those decisions in Alberta, just like it would be bizarre for Saskatchewan to take all their wheat and bake this many croissants and this many bagels and this many loaves of bread. <laughs> why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just ship the wheat to the customer and have them do it? That's why so many refineries are near where consumers live, not where producers live. It's just weird. It's not how the industry is done, but it's actually not a real argument at all. It's just an excuse that the NDP is using for why they're against the Keystone XL. See, the Keystone XL is the only pipeline that's this close to, to, to being a go. All we need is for the U.S. to finally approve it, and that may happen in a year and a half when Barack Obama leaves office. But Rachel Notley is against that pipeline. She claims she's open-minded to another pipeline called the Trans Mountain Pipeline, which would go to Vancouver, and Energy East, which would go to the Atlantic Coast. But the problem with those is neither of them have received regulatory approval, and both of them are years away for construction. So isn't that convenient? The only pipeline that's ready and regulatorily approved is the one she's against. But maybe she's for some other ones in a future time that aren't even approved yet. Oh, by the way, she's also against the Northern Gateway Pipeline in Northern BC that has been approved. Isn't that a coincidence? She's against all the real pipelines that have been approved, she might be for the ones that haven't been approved. But there's one more wrinkle. Trans Mountain Pipeline would ship crude oil to China. It's not gonna be refined in Alberta. So even that fake argument about we need to refine here, it falls down. Look, can I say the obvious? Rachel Notley and her government don't know anything about the oil patch other than they don't like it. They're run by a group of people who are opposed to all development, 
all pipelines, all oil sands. Don't take it from me. Take it from Rachel Notley's cabinet appointee, David Egan. I think it's best if we lead with a little chant from him. It was a little bit cruder when he did it a few years ago on the steps of the legislature, but it's essentially the same message that Rachel Notley has today. Here, take a look. That doing the right thing means that we have no new approvals for tar sand projects, yeah. and we start to invest money into a renewable energy and into a sustainable economy. Yeah. No new approvals. No new approvals. No new approvals. No new approvals. He was a little bit clearer than Rachel Notley was, wasn't he? For the Rebel.media, I'm Ezra Levant. <laughs>